Do you have any of those plastic sleds? You know the ones I'm talking about. They're usually like 15, 20 bucks and you could get them pretty much anywhere and you're lucky if they make it through the winter. Well, I don't know about you, but I've sunk well over $100 into those and I am fed up with it. And the straw that broke the camel's back was this. I got this one a few weeks back and in two days, two days, this happened. And you know what? There's gotta be a better way. So I hopped on Amazon, tried to find a sled that I don't care how much it costs. I just want it to not break. I want to find a sled that my kids are going to have the rest of their lives. They'll pass down to their kids and that will be an heirloom of my house. So let's show you the one I found. But first, I'm Jeff. Welcome back to the workshop. This is Fun Size Adventures, where we're all about getting you and your family out on little adventures in your own backyard and beyond. So what I found is this. This is from a brand called Go Sports Snow Sleds. And I found other videos where people unbox this, but none where anybody was testing it out, seeing if it's really durable. And that's not good enough for me. So we took this out in a few different snow conditions to figure out if it really lives up to the hype and the $100 price tag. Because you could buy, I threw it over there. Hold on. Cause you could buy 20 of these for that price, but is it worth the headache? First, let me tell you about the construction of it. It's made pretty much, you know how these are made out of like hard, brittle plastic? This kind of plastic, I want you to think of that little cozy coupe car that you bought your kids when they were toddlers that's probably still sitting outside in your yard somewhere and has been there for 10 plus years and is still not broken. That's the kind of plastic this is made out of. This is still all wet because I had to take it from the kids in order to make this video. The plastic feels very strong, but also a little bit pliable, like that kind of plastic that won't just shatter. It'll, it'll bend, it'll absorb impacts. It's got these good grooves on the bottom to help you steer straight. It's turned up a little bit on the front, but not a lot. What I like about this is how wide it is. This is way wider than that other sled. Compare the two right there. You've got a good solid six to eight inches wider. And while this might not turn up much on the front, that extra width really helps this float on top of the powder. We tested this in two different days, two different kinds of conditions. One where there was really deep powder that hadn't been sled on at all at a local hill, and the second time in our backyard here on some more hard packed snow in our little snow tube chute. And it did great on both of them. And as you can see, this is double layered. It's not just like, the, it's not just the one layer of plastic between you and the ground. There's the bottom, there's the top, there's some space in between, and there's even foam in part of it. Gives you a little bit of a cushion, but I don't think it's really for that. What it really comes in handy is, you know when you're sliding the sled, or especially when you're trying to push somebody in a sled from behind, and it slides them towards the front of the sled? This foam is a lot grippier than this plastic. So if you're pushing somebody, their butt's gonna stay put a lot better there and not just slide to the front of the sled and take a nosedive. And we got about like six inch rise on the back. as a very strong nylon leash here loop on the end. It's got two sets of handles, one towards the front, one towards the back. So far, everything about this sled, the way that it's built, I love. But what's most important is the rideability of it. How well does it ride? The width of it being much wider than your typical sled, in the powdery conditions, it rides right up over the snow with no problem. Your nose of the sled isn't digging into the snow at all. Whenever I get up to speed in one of those cheap sleds, I like wing off to the side and take a corner or like spin around backwards. This track's very straight, which helps to give you a better ride and kept, keeps you from crashing and stuff. And also with the width of it. Even my older kids, which are eight and 10, they can sit side by side on this, which is pretty cool. And also because of that width, I could sit in the back, spread my knees out wide, fit even two of my smaller kids in front of me and fit th the three of us on this sled. Advertised as a two man sled, I've had no trouble as long as the majority of the people are kids. Then as far as on the icier conditions here in the backyard, where our track for our snow tubes kind of takes some corners, that was a little bit of a challenge, but this sled handled it well. It was icy enough that when it had to take a corner, you just drag your hand a little bit and it takes the corner fine. Everything about controlling this sled seemed to work out great too. And as far as durability, after a few days of riding, it's got a few little scuffs on the bottom, which is to be expected if you're hitting even little sticks or rocks or anything. You're gonna get little marks, but nothing that's gonna like cause any long-term damage, just a couple little, little scuffs. The kids have even run into some trees with this and not causing any damage. It did say on the instructions that to ensure the longevity of the sled, which this also goes for any sled, to keep it indoors when you're not using it in heated space if possible. Any plastic is going to be more brittle the colder it is. So keeping it inside when you're not using it will definitely extend the life. The instructions also said that you could extend the life by not taking it off any jumps. If you ask me, that's not really a realistic ask. So we took it upon ourselves to build a jump, take it off it, test it anyway. As you can see, that worked great. No squirrely landing, everything was perfect with that. But when it comes to jumping sleds, take this one little piece of advice. A lot of people build the jump at the bottom of the hill. Don't do that. Go maybe a quarter of the way up, build the jump there. That way you go off the jump and then you still land in the very bottom of the hill. 
it cushions your landing, and you're less likely to break any sled you're jumping with. And also, you're gonna carry more speed then, because you're gonna catch it like a little landing ramp. That's a bonus tip. That's the kind of thing you get here at Fun Size Adventures. <laughs> By all accounts, it's lived up to the $100 price tag. I'm even thinking of buying a second one and then hypothetically, I'll never have to buy another sled again. I've probably bought a dozen sleds in my adult life already and I'm just sick of having to go buy ones that I know are gonna end up in the trash. And after that, if you feel like a snow tube is more your speed, be sure to click on this video right here where we show you what brand snow tube this is and whether or not it's worth your money. Until next time, get out there and have a fun size adventure of your own. Booyah! Booyah. <laughs>